Who here has a computer? Who here has a Mac? Who here has a PC? Well, somebody does. <laughs> I know I have, I've had both. I have friends who have had both and who have both currently. And everyone has their opinions, but to me, there's really nothing more fruitless than a debate on which one is better. <laughs> so, to break the reason I'm talking, I'm here to explain why, I like I said, the debate is a matter. What I'm going to talk about is, I'm just going to overview the, what the Mac and the PCs are best for, what they're worse for, and what crosses over between the two. Also keep in mind we're talking about desktops and laptops, not handhelds like iPads and tablets, because there's no time for that. <laughs> First off, we have Macs. And Macs in general are beautiful machines. They, Apple prides itself in releasing state-of-the-art products with user-friendly, streamlined cases and interfaces. And first of all, they're easy to use. Macs are becoming increasingly popular with young people and old people because of this ease of use. And that's just growing true and true as time goes on. The troubleshooting on the Mac is fairly straightforward, and most, the most common hardware and software issues that happen on a PC don't necessarily occur on a Mac because, I mean, provided you take care of it. And the biggest one is both of these is viruses just don't happen as much as they can, but you gotta really search for them. And design programs are more straightforward and easy to use on a Mac, and just basic ease of use in general. It's very user friendly. Anyone can do it. And that brings me to aesthetics. The entire interface and setup of the Mac computer is good and aesthetically pleasing. It's pretty. It's pretty, and the graphic capabilities of it make it the primary computer for graphic design majors and people in artsy fields in general. Artsy people, like hipsters, generally gravitate towards Mac despite their mainstream nature because they allow for them to artistically express their individuality without not really requiring them to know anything. That goes back to the ease of use. And finally, for Macs, we have the all-in-one nature of the product. Everything that you have in a Mac is is uh, all put together. It all comes in one sleek, shiny metal brush case, and it's just really pretty. And this is a blessing and a curse because since they're sold together, if you don't build them, it means that you're limited on what you can put into them. And if you purchase the computer directly from Apple, you're going to pay a lot more than you would if you were to go out and like, build a PC by yourself, and that'd be like a fraction of the cost. On the same token, though, you're getting a product that's mostly up to date, and you don't have to deal with the hassle of upgrading and putting it together yourself because, frankly, nobody else going to do that. Yeah. Which brings me to PCs, speaking of not knowing how to do things. And, but unless your PC is old or you don't take care of it, it has the potential to be an extremely formidable machine at a fraction of the cost if you're willing to put a little bit of effort into it. The price point alone, as you can see, is enough to sway people into buying one over a Mac. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> the fact that the company, more than one company, produces PCs, whereas Apple just has Apple producing Apple computers, is one of the things that keeps prices low. And a new PC is cheaper than a Mac. Uh, a new iMac starts off at $12.99, but you can build a PC at a fraction of the cost. Then we have programming and gaming. Uh, the majority of programming that's done in the world happens on PCs as opposed to Macs. There's many reasons for this, but the main one that I found, and we'll share it because there's not a lot of time, is that PCs are just more set up for programming. And there are more programming companies that have PCs already, so it's just a self perpetuating system. And since PC, PCs are mostly a programming engine, Gaming falls in line with that. Computer gaming has been currently and has been dominated by PCs. With Microsoft owning a major part of the gaming industry, it's easy to see why that's the case. According to Mac World, the uh, Apple is still not seen as a serious player in the gaming industry. 
and one of the most comparable reasons that PCs dominate the gaming market happens to coincide with my last point, which I accidentally just showed you. Uh, the upgradable nature of the machine. Whenever you have a component of a PC and it becomes obsolete, you have the option to take it, throw it away, get a new one, and install it yourself and move on with your life, if you know how to do that. Um, it's going to be a good thing because it's cheaper and quicker, and you don't have to send away your computer to someone else who could screw it up or just does whatever they want with it. And it can also be a bad thing because, like I said, uh, if you don't know how to take apart your computer properly, the chances are you don't. And if you don't even know how to take it apart, you probably don't know how to put it, get it back together. And if that's you, then it's probably more of a deterrent and a selling point. Additionally, you have more, a lot more options to juggle when picking out a computer, making the purchase more of a hassle. Finally, we come to what crosses over. Things that both machines can do. Most, uh, if, if all of you are planning to do, all you are planning to do with computers, check Facebook, check emails, write papers, just other basic tasks like use the calculator or things like that, then either one is going to be fine for you. You really don't have to make a big deal about choosing because they both do a fine job. Max and PCs have the same essential functions. Most programs are also on either system. Intel, uh, the company that produces the, the processors, that's the one, for both companies says that the final Mac versus PC comparison comes down to software. And since most software can be used on both machines, it boils down to personal preference for the most part. And finally, if you think you made the wrong choice and you have, like, in that case, buyer's remorse, Hackintosh's boot camp, parallels, and wine, and programs and setups that will allow you to run either operating system and, therefore, all the other programs on either any machine that you happen to have, effectively neutralizing the need to choose at all. So to summarize what I've gone over, I've gone over the good and the bad of Macs, and the good and the bad of PCs, and I talked about how PCs are cheaper, but they're more if they're, they require more effort. And Macs are prettier and easier to use, but they're considerably more expensive. And basically, how it boils down to personal preference when you're agreeing with for a computer. So next time you want to debate which is better, just think that a computer is a tool, like a screwdriver. Nobody cares what kind of screwdriver you have. So as long as you have a screwdriver that works, that's all that matters. Thank you.